Are you a contender? Many of us are petrified by that question because we don't like conflict. We just want to serve. We, we want to be nice to people and have them be nice to us. That's the dream, right? But there's some things that are happening around us and, and you feel like, well, you know what, now, maybe now I need to speak up, I need to raise my voice. But you're starting to realize it's going to cost you something. Because they know if they share one of their beliefs, the kid next to them in school might go, oh, we're one of those. We are made in the image of God. That's what gives us our worth. And most of the world does not believe that. You're the one arrow who's going this way in a world that's going that way. The reality is everywhere we look we have erected idols in which we worship. Culture is like plate tectonics. Cultures are rubbing against one another, building pressure. We need to know what it means to be a Christian. We need to contend for the truth and liberating power of the gospel. Will you be a contender? Who are the kids in your life whom you love? Who are the kids in your life that God is calling you to disciple? I believe our children really need to know why they can trust the Bible and how to read the Bible. Discipleship for kids matters because one day they will be faced with life's toughest questions. I think the question a lot of our teens have is they go, okay, well, I have these beliefs. I know them to be true. What then? What do I do with that? We need to embark on a journey of discovery. And that journey will require of us wisdom and courage and love and openness to transcendence. Christianity is the true story of the world and it's a good story. I look in Acts and I see these apostles that just did not care what happened when they shared the gospel. And I think it's just one word, passion. Louis Giglio, he describes passion this way. He said, passion is the degree of difficulty one is willing to endure to accomplish something. Let's develop our students to have a deep passion to endure for the name of Jesus Christ. That's what contending for the faith really is in its simplest form, is loving Jesus with everything we have and loving those he loves with everything we have. We've largely lost the Christian imagination. What happens is today in our culture, Christianity is either viewed as implausible or undesirable or both. That's what the world does. They are busy forming in a variety of ways their identity. They're trying to get location. I'm trying to find myself. That's a spiritual battle. You're that one arrow. You're moving against the other arrows. And what's scarier is those other arrows, they seem to be getting bigger. More and more, we're understanding the cost of living as that one arrow. My goal is not to crush other people who are outside the church. It's to invite them into the gracious world of a forgiving God. But always point to the real contender, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all of us. Be reconciled with God. Get reconnected. Understand why you are so precious. In God's sight, Christ makes a great deal of us. So much that he came and lived and died on the cross so that we might find hope and meaning and significance, not in the things of this world, but in the gospel and in Jesus. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. The church needs to learn how to believe that, and then we will be able to do this.